best to call them generally, man by man, according to the script. Here is a list. The list of every man's name which thought fit through all Athens to play in our interview before the Duke and Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good pen sequencing. Say what the play treats on. Then, read the names of the actors and so grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Disney. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a Mary. Now, good pen sequencing, call forth your actors by the scrolls. Masters, spread yourselves. As I call you, Nick Bottom. Ready? <laughs> Name what part I am for and proceed. Nick Bottom, you are set down for Pyramus. <laughs> what is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover who kills himself most gallant of them. That will call for some tears in the troops before me, heaven. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storm. I will condole in some measure, yet my chief humor is for a tyrant. Francis, please, the better standard. Here, Pensy Quincy. What is this, me? A wandering knight? It is the lady. <laughs> 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 May it be, let me not play a woman. I have a beard. <laughs> Coming. <laughs> you shall play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face, let me play Thisbe too. I will speak in a monstrous little voice. Disney, Disney. Ah, Pyramus, my lover dear. Ah, thank you dear, and lady dear. No, no, no. You must play Pyramus and do to you Disney. Well, proceed. Robin Starling, here, can't see him too. Robin Starling, you must play Pyramus. Father. Tom Snout, the tinker. You, Thisby's father. Uh, myself. Thisby's mother. <laughs> <laughs> Snug the joiner. You, the lion's part. <laughs> and I have here to play fitted. Have your lion's part written? You may do it extempore, but it's nothing but drawing. Raw. Roar. 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 Let me play the lion too. I will roar that I will make any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the duke say, Let him roar, roar. again. Let him roar again. <laughs> and you would do it too terribly. You would frighten the duchess and the ladies. That they would shriek. That were nothing. I grant you, friends, if we were to fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no discretion but to hang us. Yeah. But I, I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you as gently as any nightingale. You, you play no part but Pyramus. For Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a most proper man as one shall see in a summer's day. A most Lovely and gentle. Therefore, you must be great parents. Well, I will undertake it. What beard were I best to play it in? Okay, what you will. I will discharge it in either your black and red beard or your gray beard or your French crown color beard. Your perfect yellow. <laughs> Mark, here are your parts. And I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to calm them by tomorrow night and meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town by moonlight. There we will rehearse. Lord, if we were to meet in the city, we would be dogged with company and our devices never. In the meantime, I will draw a bill of properties such as our play wants. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. <laughs> Take pains, be perfect, adieu. At the Duke's house we meet. Hold, or cut both strings. <laughs> Oh, now it's very 
it. Wither wander you. Over hill, over dale, through a brush, through a briar, over park, over pale, through a flood, through a fire. I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon's sphere, and I serve the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green. And now, farewell, thou love of spirits. I'll be gone. Our queen and all our elves come here anon. King Dom keep the travel to your knight. Take heed the queen come not within his sight. For Oberon is passing fell in wrath, because that she, as her tender path, a lovely boy stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling, and jealous Oberon would have the child. Knight of his train to trace the forest wild. But she perforce withholds the love boy, crowns him with flowers, and makes him all her joy. And now they never meet in grove or green, like found, found clear as spangled starlight sheen. But they do swear that all their little elves for fear creep into tiny little, little, little acorns. <laughs> <laughs> and hide in there. <laughs> Are you not he that frights the mains of the villagery? Thou speaks aright. I am not to marry to wander tonight. I just to Oberon and make him smile. When I a fat feet bent horse beguile, dang in likeness like a filly foe. The room fairy, here comes Oberon. And here my mistress would you that were gone. Ill met my moonlight proud Titania. What? Jealous Oberon? Fairy, speak hence. I have forsworn his wedding company. Very glad to want her, but not thy lord. Then I am thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from fairyland, and the shape of corn sat all day, playing pipes of corn, and bursting love to Amor's felidity. Why art thou here? Comes for the farthest step of India? But that pursuit, your bouncing Amazon, your booskin mistress, your warrior love, to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How can thou thus for shame, Titania, glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never have we met on Hilldale, forest meadow, by rushing brook, by pink mountain, nor by the beach sea's margin, to dance our ringlets in the whistling wind, but with thy rolls, thou hast disturbed our sport! Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do beg a changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land does not buy the boy of me. His mother was a vortress of mine, and she being mortal did die. And for her sake do I bear him up, and for her sake will I not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance, till after Theseus' wedding day, if you will patiently dance my ringlets, and see our moonlight rebels. Go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your arms. Give me that boy and I will go with thee. Now for thy fairy. Fairies, away. We shall try down right if I longer stay. Go! 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 Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My hey, gentle puck, come hither. Thou rememberst, since once I sat upon a promontory and saw a mermaid on a dolphin's back, uttering such sweet dulcet and harmonious breath, that the rude sea grew civil at her song, and certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music? I remember. At the very time I saw, thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid all armed. A certain aim he took at a fair vestial throned in the west, and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow, as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. The time marked where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's womb, and maidens call it love and idleness. Fetch me this flower. The juice of it, on sleeping eyelid late, will make her man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb. And be thou here again, ere the Leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in forty minutes. <laughs> Having once this juice, I lost a tawny when she's asleep, and dropped the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing she waken looks upon, be it bear, or lion, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or unbusy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. 